we're at the point now where we want to add a deformation lattice to this. The first thing that I want to do is fold the bottom. So I actually need to press Shift S there, cursor to selected, and then I'll select these. And then I'm going to rotate that 90, get that into position. And it matches up exactly. I don't want it to match up exactly. So in face mode, I'm going to select those and I'm going to press the G key and then move those just along the Y axis. And I'm going to press the expand selection function. And I'm going to scale this just a little bit. So I'm going to press S and X and I'm going to bring that in just a little bit. Okay. So that's all we're going to do on the bottom. We're not going to focus much more on that. Now on the top, we want to come in here and focus on adding that slight curvature. If you actually look at a real box and I modeled this off a real box, the real thing has that slight curvature. So when you render this and set it up, that slight bit of curvature adds realism to it. What I need to do is set our object's origin to the center. So I will select, let's come into the front view, option Z to go into X-ray. I'll marquee through those two points, Shift S, cursor to select it. It goes to the center of those two. Leave edit mode and we're going to once again, we're going to set the object's origin to the 3D cursor and it'll go right to the center. And then add a lattice. The lattice is initially going to be gigantic and let's just make it four inches. And I'm going to come into the top and then press the S key. My mouse is up here. If your mouse is really close to the center, it'll be hard to control. So S key, and I'm just going to get that a little bit closer to the size. It doesn't need to be exact. Come back into the front, one key on the numeric keypad, S key, and then Z, because we're just going to scale along the Z. And what I want to do is I want to get it so the top is only about halfway up to this flap. That'll work. Okay, so we only have a two by two by two, so we'll come down to the object properties for the lattice, and we'll do five by five, and then seven for the vertical. It's a, it's a lot to look at, so I'm gonna press option Z to go out of uh, X-ray. We need to assign it, we need to attach it. It's in place, but it's not actually attached. Select the mesh, come over, to modifiers, we're going to add a lattice. The lattice needs to be attached, so just select that. And there we go. Now we're ready to deform. So we're first going to do this in the top view. So we're going to look at this from the top. Tab key goes into edit mode, and I'm going to select these on this side, hold the shift key, and select these. And then I want to deselect the top. So I'm going to hold the control key down and marquee across those top vertices. Because we actually want a bit of a transition from the affected area to the non-affected area up top. So I'll come back to the top so we can see this deformation the best. Press the S key and then X to constrain to the X. And I just want to bring it out just a little bit like that. So there's just that little bit of curvature. And then we can see the exact value, 1.053. I can copy that because we're going, we're going to want to apply that to the front and the back. Okay, and we're going to rotate. Control key to deselect those and deselect those. Come back to the top. and then S key to scale. And we're only going to be going along the Y axis in this case. And I'm just going to click and then I'll paste in that exact value. So it's an exact match. And you could play with this. You could actually come in if you really wanted to be neurotic about, <laughs> about this. And you could 
bring those in just a little bit to give even just a little bit better curvature but you know honestly I'm not going to worry about that too much there we go so that is good now I'm going to press the tab key to leave edit mode and I'd really like to move for organizational purposes I'm going to create a new collection and I'm going to call these lattices and I'm going to take this lattice and move into that collection so that we can organize these and I'm going to call this lattice for the body and what I would suggest is that if you're in the construction process and you're concerned that you're going to be doing some destructive editing downstream is that you can duplicate I'm going to press shift and D to duplicate the original here and then I'm going to remove the influence of the lattice on that one and we'll just call this box undeformed and that's just something I'm going to save there it's going to turn off for rendering and I've got that pristine original in case I decide I've done something that I don't want to do and I can go back to that step now we're going to come back to this one that is deformed and we are going to apply that deformation and I'm going to turn off that lattice so we can come back to that a little bit later if we want the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have us deform this top lid because the lid also is a little bit curved on the original object because it's this flimsy cardboard it also gets slightly curved and that bit of curvature adds something nice to the rendering so what we want to do is come back into tab key to go back into edit mode and we're going we're going to work on this center flap this main flap what I called the lid select that single center vertex press shift s and we're going to do cursor to selected tab key and then we're going to come back to our add function and we're going to add another lattice at that point I'm going to have a switch to the side view I know it's a little bit hard to see s key and then I'm going to scale only along the y direction I want to scale so it's a little bit closer to the geometry and in the front s key scale uniformly so we're pretty close to the bounds of that area okay and then let's take this and we're, let's do a I always have to test this and then we'll do four in that direction okay so now we early on we had done a selection set so for instance if I press the tab key and we come over to our vertex groups we could do lid here and I could select that so we can restrict the deformation just to those tab key to leave come back over to this new lattice and I'm going to call this one lattice for lid and selecting the main object again we're once again going to add a modifier of a lattice type select that lid lattice and then we're going to restrict to the lid top so it will only deform those vertices select the lattice press the tab key and let's come into sort of this right view G key and then Y so it's only moving along the Y axis in fact let's come over and look at this specifically and you can see that slight curvature right there and that's all we need just a little bit like that good that works now we come back to the main object and we're just going to apply this oh wrong one I applied the subdivision applied the lattice there we go and I'm now I'm going to hide the lattice so the next thing that that I want to do is fold down the flaps and this is all going to be in preparation too for adding an armature to the object so for the top let's come back into polygon edit mode deselect by clicking outside of the object come to flap top and we're going to select those actually what I want to do is change let's look at this in the right view the the deformation deformed this a little bit more than I'd like so I'm gonna actually come over here quickly G key now this is why you need to select you need to go into x-ray mode because 
that will allow you to select all the way through G key and I'm just going to sort of move these back in G key to form those a little bit better better transition select a single vertex at the fold point shift s cursor to selected and then we're going to select those top polygons and we're going to rotate those 90 degrees but that goes in the opposite direction so this is why we this is why sometimes the widget's nice because you can just rotate like this and then come in see it's negative and just type in negative 90 that works pretty well there we go okay now what I want to do is I want to test this whole flap coming down and I want to see how it fits I want to make sure that it fits correctly and so I'm going to come down and I'm going to place in fact let's look at this on the right side also I think I'd like to move these in just a, a little bit more the way the lattice affected those so I'm going to come back into the right view press the G key and I'll just move those in along the Y axis only G Y like that that works okay come to the fold I'd like it to be actually here shift s cursor to active that also works so we're going to do top flap select which is right there and then we're also going to come down to lid top and we're going to select and it will add that to the selection and then I can rotate this down by 90 degrees minus 90 and we're going to go out of x-ray and I just want to check it I want to check for the fit I want to check to see if there's anything about it that is overlapped or not right and this is where I think that'll be pretty good you could I could scale this in if I wanted to like I did the bottom flap but I think for demonstration purposes this will work pretty well Okay, so that was just a test for the fit but from a posing standpoint we're gonna leave it like this the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to bring down the flaps because I want these flaps to actually be in the rest pose mode in their folded state so what I will do is come over we'll, we'll do this side I'm gonna select this vertex because that's where I want my fold point to be shift s cursor to active or selected whichever and then we're going to come over to this select there we go I'm going to rotate that down by 90 and we're going to see that because of the deformation it's caused a little bit of bowing here to this side and I'd like this to actually be flat so I'm going to switch over to the scale tool it's in the correct location so we just scale down here we can scale that flat and then just take this down to zero there we go that's nice and flat so we'll do that to the other side select this vertex we'll do flap left select that come to the rotation tool we need to do shift s to move the cursor to that new now this is where this is the active element but these are also selected elements so shift s and we're going to go to active and that vertex is the active of all the selected elements and then we can rotate that down by negative 90 switch over to scale and then just scale that down to flatten it there we go so that's the pose mode that's what we call the rest pose mode that i want for those flaps we're ready to apply thickness we've spent a lot of time preparing up to this point and we're going to focus on this back area in fact I'm going to have us move the 3d cursor to this location press the N key to reveal our control panel over here come down to view and I'm going to press this uh, lock to 3d cursor then we can pivot around this location let's come to we've got a subdivision surface object modifier applied it's turned off right now so let's hide that we're going to come down to a solidify modifier 
and it's going to initially be really big and let's type in 0 0.01 inches and there we can see that and what we want to do is we want to come down to output vertex groups because we're going to end up baking in this thickness and you can see where it says shell and rim we want to assign a vertex group to this so what we have to do is we have to first come back down to our vertex groups and we need to create two groups so i'm going to create two groups first one we're going to call paper thickness paper or we'll call it paper edge and then the next one we'll call paper insides then we can come back up to the modifier and for the shell shell is the thickness it's the it's all the inside area that's on the inside so we'll call that paper inside and for the rim is the edge and what that's going to allow us to do is flatten that down and maintain those as controllable vertex groups but before we do that i'd actually like to get this gap closed up a little bit so i'm going to come into face mode yeah i'm going to come into face mode select a single face on this interior it's going to be hard to try and select these because of where they're at but we are going to come up to a neat select menu come down to select linked link flat faces and it'll get all of those so if i come in here in x-ray we can see that it has gotten all those which is really cool and then we can just move that and get it a little bit closer as if it were attached i want to leave a little bit of gap because i don't want any vertices to be accidentally welded together at some point and i'm going to add one more loop right here and then when we turn subdivision back on we can see that that rounding comes in and looks like it attaches to the back so that's pretty cool but I'm going to have us do one other operation where we could probably leave this thickness modifier as it is, but I do want to show you something cool. So I'm going to press the tab key to leave edit mode. We could see this if we came over into a shaded. We want to turn on, I'm using 3.3 and we want to come in and to turn on shade auto smooth. That's a new feature. What that does is it automatically puts you into smooth shading mode but it also enables auto smooth and I'm going to take this value up to a 40 so it breaks the angles it doesn't try and smooth around these large 90 degree angles so that's nice okay but what I want to do is I want to come back up here to our modifier stack and for solidify we're going to come in here and we're going to apply this and now it's actually going to subdivide across those boundaries and we don't want that happening at these 90 degree angles so how do we fix that well we fix that pretty easily by coming back down here to our vertex group and we have paper edge so i'm going to do a select on that and ta-da, there we go and you have to be in edge mode for this next operation to work blender tends to obscure visually between being in face mode and edge mode and it can be a little bit hard to know which you're in unless you look up at the icon but we need to be in in edge mode for this and we come over to select and we want to come down to select loops and then we want to select a boundary loop and it will only select the boundary edges of that selection set not these internal edges which is really awesome because now we can come over to edge crease which is right here and then you just begin mousing left to right until you begin seeing that change click and then just make sure the factor is set to 1.0 and that will prevent you from having subdivision across those boundaries those 90 degree boundaries and we have paper thickness so there we go okay and that is what we needed to do to get that formed up to this point